for Mr. Joey Coco Diaz. What's happening? What's up? Look at my boys. What up, people? When I was 23, listen, I was telling Felicia's story the other day on the podcast. I'm going to tell you guys, too, because it really fucked with my whole patois, who I was. I mugged the hooker by mistake. I'm going to tell you guys a story real quick. And I'm going to tell you how it was by mistake, okay? You don't just look at Sometimes you leave the house and you're like, I'm going to go fuck somebody up. And you go fuck them up. That's premeditated. So if they come back at me with a cold case trial, it wasn't fucking premeditated. That's what I'm trying to get at. You know, I'm from Jersey, northern New Jersey. So you go out, you drink, you party, and then at 3 in the morning, you think you're cool, and you go into New York City. That's what you do. That's what you do. You go get a steak or Chinese food in Chinatown. So one night, my buddy, it was Pelican, this guy Stinky, and this guy Stephen Edward Tweds, and this guy Al. And we went over the city at 3 in the morning, went to eat, like, Chinese food or whatever. And on the way back, I don't know if anybody's from New York here, on the way back, you go through a tunnel. And in the winter, there'd be 80 fucking hookers out there. Not like these fucking half he she's on Santa Monica and shit. I mean, hookers with big fat tits out when you would drive by, they pull your shirt up in the fucking winter. It was November. They were out there with bikinis on. That's a fucking hooker. You understand me? That's a hooker. That's a real hooker earning her fucking living. That's a New York hooker. Hot pants, pussy sticking out of the fucking hot pants. Tits out, fucking dancing out there. She got snow on the ground. She got fucking heels. That's a hooker. And they had like 80 of them on this block and the pimp was a little black guy in a wheelchair that had like a submachine gun in there. You know what I'm saying? And meanwhile, people like he's making believe he's fucking retarded, but that motherfucker would cap your ass, you know? So we go over there, we eat, and we're coming back to the thing, and also Roger's like, this is the fucking creepy thing, that my buddy Al was driving, and it was his car. So Roger's like, Al, do you mind if we stop and get a blowjob in the mood? He would always go, we was one of those guys that would squeeze his ball and do that noise. I'd go for a dick suck and die. And he would call me, D my last name is Diaz, but he would call me Die. He'd go, Die, I could go for a dick sucking. Let's go for a dick sucking. And I'm not into hookers. I, I was when I was 17. I got a bad deal at the 1040 Club, and I never went over there again, right? <laughs> so, fucking Roger, you want a blowjob now? It's 4.15 in the fucking morning. He's like, yeah. And I go, Roger, where the fuck are we going to go? It's freezing. He goes, go over by the Mercedes dealer right there. There's a guy that used to sell pretzels and shit and hot dogs and sodas with the cars going into Lincoln Tunnel with pollution all around you. If you've ever had a pretzel pollution, they're fucking delicious. Fuck the mustard. You know what I'm saying? That exhaust on the pretzel is fucking brilliant. Anthony Bourdain has yet to do a fucking show on the pretzel from New York City. The fucking old pretzel with a snot on it and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's hard on the motherfucker. You're breaking it with a hammer at four in the morning. That's a pretzel, bitch. You know what I'm saying? So we eat the pretzel. We cross back over 11th Avenue. It's between 11th and 12th. And you make a right on 12th and right there. So it's 11th and there's all these old things then. And it was a fucked up neighborhood then. So we get back and the car's rocking. And he's in the back seat in the middle and she's sucking his dick. And blah, blah, blah. And, he, blah, 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 and she's sucking and the car is fucking rocking. And all of a sudden, she gets up, and he, she storms out of the car, and he comes out, and he's like, fuck you, bitch. And he comes up, and he's like, die. I got to get another fucking blowjob. That wasn't good enough. <laughs> we're like, how fucking crazy are you? You know what I'm saying? Go. Go get the other blowjobs. So now we're standing on the corner. He takes this cute little girl. He puts in the back seat. He's swapping spit with her. Roger was fucking crazy. She's sucking his dick. You know, and next thing you know, he's like, guys, she wants to go to Jersey and party. I just wanted to go home to Jersey and go to fucking sleep. That's all I wanted to do. I don't care. Just get me over the bridge. I'll jump out of the fucking car. You know, you want to go fuck a hooker, go be yourself. So he's like, hurry up, get in, get in. So I don't hear her. She's like yelling or whatever the fuck. So I get in on this side, and he's in the middle with the chick next to him, and Glenn Conti, Stinky, gets in on this side, and then Al's driving over here, and Twedz is over here, and we're like, get in. And Roger's like, let's take this bitch to Jersey. And I'm like, sitting in the fucking car, I'm like, what are you, blah, I'm enjoying it too. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm no fucking innocent bystander. You know what I'm saying? So we're like, let's go to Jersey and fucking party. We got this fucking hook. And she's like, Jersey, I ain't never been to motherfucking Jersey. And she's yelling and screaming. And she's like, Al, pull away. We're like, Al, keep fucking going. Go through the red lights. And she's like, Al, stop. Al, stop. Now she's sideways in the back seat. We're holding her. This is fucking kidnapping. We're holding her, right? <laughs> So finally, she's like, what do you motherfuckers want? I'll give you my money. She goes in the purse. She takes out a straight razor. And she goes to cut Al. And I grab her head to fucking pull it back. But the wig came off. She had this fucking wig. And it just, ah! Ah! I thought her head came off. But this, the wig came off. And then I see my... 
And then I see my friend Glenn Conti just do a fucking punch and get it like in the neck. And she's like, ow, 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 ow. We go through the fucking tunnel. They got cameras. We're holding it. She's like, ah, oh, help me, help me. I'm sitting there. Fuck you, bitch. There ain't no help now. You scared the fuck out of me. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind robbing somebody, but she scared the fuck out of me with that skunk head, you know? So now we get her out through Jersey and shit. She's like, I got money in my pussy and all this shit. I got money in my pussy. And she lifted up her leg and like three bills came out rolled up that were just coated in this thing that nobody would touch it. We're like, I ain't touching it. Fuck it. So we're like, where the fuck are we going to take her? Where are we going to take her? We were crazy. We are going to take her to Roger's house. She's like, no, my parents are still up. We're like, fuck it. Let's take her somewhere, Roger. We can't. And she's like, I got your motherfucking license plates and all this shit. So we take her to Fairview Cemetery. We take her to the cemetery. Everybody's out there fucking freezing and shit. And she's like, I got your motherfucking license plate. We want to know you don't, bitch. So we take her deep, deep into the cemetery. And we tell her, take off your fucking, she had like a muumuu on over the bikini. So she took her bikini on. We're like, nah, you can't fucking leave. You know, you're going to leave here. And guys, you're looking at me like, Joe, are you crazy? I was fucking 23. <laughs> Not even. I wasn't even. I was still fucking younger than that because it was like 83 or something, right? So we get her. We take her tube tube off. And I remember being furious about that fucking wig. Like my heart was still fucking. Like I thought it was an animal that was alive. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> So we back up the car, we're pulling out of the cemetery, like, what are we going to do? We can't leave her here. My friend's like, fuck her. You know, she knows the deal. She's a hooker. That's the fucking deal. Sometimes you get mugged, you know? And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Don't say that word. So finally, she's like, fuck you too, motherfucker. I remember your face, and I was so pissed. I didn't want to hit her, so I just took the wig. And I lit it on fire. <laughs> and I remember that I, I stayed till I watched the fucking wig burn to the last Chinese hair. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't even think it was Chinese hair. It was some animal mixed with something. That wig, and I stayed there and looked at that wig and looked at her like, I got you, bitch. Yeah. And we left her there, and I never forgot about it. It was like a bad fucking thing that was tucked away. Deep, deep, deep. That's why I did drugs all those years, dipping away that story. But then you stop doing drugs, and all of a sudden you're in bed with your mask on. You, Oh, fuck, I mugged a hooker in 80 fucking three. Yeah. Then you, watch, then you watch cold case and shit, and you're like, this motherfucker could trace my shit back. She's probably in the Philadelphia police station right now saying there was a chubby guy. He looked like Fred Flintstone and shit. <laughs> he took my wig. He's fucking responsible for that wig. You know what I'm saying? And I thought about it. Like, all week long, Felicia was like weird about it. She's like, Joey, you know, you fucking burnt her wig. And I went home, and I was like, what would make me burn a woman's wig? Like, it fucked up my insides, you know? It's fucked up, man. It's time to get the hell out of here. You guys were a great audience tonight. I, gotta, I appreciate you guys coming out. And I appreciate South's Comedy Club. <laughs>